to see color and wine and blue. It's time for Veterans Issues, the show that brings you information about veterans, military, and their family. Now here's your host, Ken Rock. Welcome to Veterans Issues. Ken Rollins here. Glad to have you in here today. Uh, two guests here. We're going to be talking about some things about, well, some things you need to know about. We're going to need your help too, so get you a pen. Be right back. Welcome back to Veterans Issues. Ken Rollins. Today we're going to ha have two guests here that uh, Mike Lemphere and uh, John Clark. They are with the uh, Chemical Corps. Regimental Association here out of uh, McClellan, and they're located in Calhoun County area. And we're going to talk to them about some projects they got on the, uh, they're going to need the community to come in and help us out on. So get your pen and uh, let's let's meet the guests. Mike? Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Uh, good to see you again, John. Good to see you. Uh, met you before. This is my first time to meet Mike, but uh, we've, uh, we've been out and talked about some things that uh, neutral to us both of us and what i want to do you know the the association i think y'all refer to as dragon soldiers but he was with the chemical corps when it was at fort mcclellan and uh it it eventually moved to uh, fort lost in the woods i mean leonard wood yeah. yes did what what all happened there mike where did you what you was you served out there or? i served out there i was the fact is i retired when the school moved so in 99 in the end of march I retired just as school started moving out to Fort Leonard Wood. You just said, I'm not going out there? Uh, no, I had kids in, uh, in school and that originally I had planned to go out there for a year because of the office I was, I had uh, to help with the transition. But then in the end I decided, you know, it was just best to go ahead and retire. How uh, long had you been with, the, with them before that and were they left? Uh, I had been back for three years. I was the director of the Joint Service Integration Group that did uh, the joint program for CBR and defense. Yeah, I didn't say that right. I said before they left, they're supposed to say it before they up and left. Yeah, up and left. <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that was a big blow to this community. I know that um, a lot of things that we've got here were, were built around McClellan, right. and uh, I still want to say Fort McClellan. Yeah. And I look, I look out there at the Starship building, and I'm so sad about, yeah. about that. Uh, what a waste. Yeah. And I, I had a great... Uh, a great plan for it that was um, a lot of people agree with, and it was to put the uh, nonviolent criminals out there that uh, could pay right, back right. restitution, right. put it to use. It's never been put to use, no. and uh, these people would be no more dangerous. I'm talking about people that in in prison for drug deals and things like that. Right. That uh, that nothing violent in there, and and they could pay back and uh, still be able to take care of their family and stuff like that. So there's a that was my proposal, but I see it. Uh, it, it just never did get, except during Katrina, they used it about one or two rooms out there or something like right. that, but it's a shame that uh, McClellan offers so much. And, and uh, but anyhow, the, uh, John, you was out, let me hear yours, because I don't, uh, I don't know well, what your <coughs> relationship was. Well, I was, um, I took my basic training. Matter of fact, I was the first class of Officer Basic when Fort McClellan, the chemical school, moved back in 1980. They didn't have horses for... No, not or. quite. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was one of the, uh, the, the first OBC class back in September 1980. Now, these people don't know what OBC is. Uh, officer basic course. That's okay. where I learned to be a chemical officer. Okay. Uh, so I started my career there. Uh, then I went out to do some other training. And then I finally finished up at McClellan uh, back in around 1994. That was before it had left. Uh, I came back for about two years. And uh, I ret uh, I'd left... Uh, McClellan. I was uh, released from active duty, early mm -hmm. release, uh, rifted as they used to call. Mm -hmm. uh, I was an overstrength, so I was uh, let go, and uh, so that's where my history with the uh, with Fort McClellan uh, started and, and ended. Uh, well, you went somewhere and you came back here. Yes, I was in the reserves, the National Guard. I went. I served at Fort Stewart. Uh, yeah. I also served uh, as a reservist in uh, Johnstown, Pennsylvania. I served in West Virginia National Guard, uh, Oklahoma National Guard, and uh, back here in McClellan. We've been around at uh, Fort Stewart. I served uh, down there. I was uh, talking to Mike about it out in the green room. Uh, you, y'all got a chapter here, the uh, uh, Ger uh, Major, Major General, General, Ger Gerald Gerald Watson. Watson. <laughs> right. And I told you beforehand, so General Watson was sitting right where you are, and 
and he had his cell phone in his coat pocket. Mm -hmm. And as we were getting ready for about time to go to commercial, his cell phone rang, and it was playing big band era music. And I said, well, it's time to go to commercial, that music says. Oh. And until I see him to this day, that's been years, mm -hmm. he still remembers that, and it was so <laughs> embarrassing. They, you know, generals don't. He has an yeah. excellent memory. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. But but he was he felt that like he had just ruined the whole shit. We're talking about the uh, wreaths across the McClellan you know, <laughs> every year. Yeah. But anyhow, tell me about that chapter, what y'all do. Uh, do you do something for the community, yeah. or is it just a group of guys and girls? Well, or? yeah, well, back in 2005, we decided since we had a huge population of former Dragon soldiers, both military and civilians in the area, uh, let's start up uh, a chapter here and there hadn't been really any chapters in the chemical regiment association in a while so we said let's be the first one and we formed a, a group uh i would say a volunteer group but most of them were drafted to come in and help establish this but it was basically to i to identify things in the community that we could become involved in and assist veterans programs to recognize some of the former military civilians that worked at mccullen through different awards that are available, and then just see what else we could do in the community. But it was a way to bring our group back together, but also do something for the community. And that's pretty much when we started. We were the, the McCullen chapter. We named it after Fort McCullen. And a couple years ago, with uh, General Watson's 80th birthday, we renamed it uh, after him. Yeah, it took my next question. I was yeah. going to ask you why you named it after so that. That answers that. Uh, what is there a um, Organization, larger organizations. You say you're a chapter of it. Normally, like that, they got the. the is there is a headquarters at Fort Leonard with the actual Chemical Corps Association, and there are other chapters like us in other parts. Have you ever been out there to Leonard Wood? To that? I've been out there a couple of times. And Somebody told me they built all the new buildings, that like just like we had here. They built new ones out there. Are we built with our tax dollars? <coughs> yes, there has been a lot built. Yeah, there's a repeat of the. Uh, chemical you know, facilities out there and that and uh, uh, they've, they've invested a huge amount of money out there. Yeah, I mean it was a duplication. Of when they started the Starship building, they wasn't even, uh, you know, they, they never got used. There were some other buildings that were just being started, but because they were contracted, they went ahead, right. went ahead forward with them. And uh, I know some of the people were doing the electrical and stuff like that, so they never use it, but we, we got a contract. But that's that's the way our tax dollars get used no. in a lot of places. So uh, it was sad to see it see it leaving here. But but, but tell me real quick in a minute what why the uh, why do you call it the uh, the dragon soldiers? I mean that I mean, you say dragon soldier, but why you call chemical core dragon soldier? That's the uh, the symbol of the chemical core is a oh, dragon. The, the, the dragon right. is a symbol. Right. Oh I mean, yeah, yeah. That was uh, that makes it makes a lot of sense because. You think it had something to do with the? Uh, well, you know, the fire, you know, we did a fire, flame was uh, one of our missions along with yeah. smoke and other ones. And that's well, when I was stationed at uh, Fort Stewart, we came over here for the gas chamber. Right. Are y'all part of that? You, don't want, you ain't the one that made me we don't want. To, we don't want to be blamed for that. <laughs> well, I was wanting to blame it on somebody. Yeah, I, I, take I my, know. <laughs> take my mask yeah. off, give my name, rank, mm -hmm. serial number without anything, yeah. Yeah. run outside. and yeah. I, I didn't know how to curse until then. Well, you know, that was all built upon doing the, so you had confidence in your master yeah. in there and it worked. And the same thing with the live agent training facility. No, I went back to uh, Fort Stewart uh, calling people names in the back yeah. of the We got to go to a break, come back, we're going to talk more with Mike and John about the Chemical Corps Regiment Association. Stay where you are, be right back. Welcome back to Veterans Issues. Uh, we're talking with Mike Lamphere, Lamphere and uh, John Clark, and they were the Chemical Corps Regimental Association. Is the acronym is CCRA? CCRA. I, I like that. I like no. acronym. But now, you're you're y'all have a as an organization you you do things within the community too. Mm -hmm. And you've got when I first met John, we were talking about this uh, about the expressway, the parkway, or somewhere to put uh, a little history for folks that's uh, watching here. There used to be flags that were placed in the median on Quintard, and that organization quit doing that. And I won't go into all the details, but uh, there's no longer, if you go up toward Gats and Etowah County, you'll see the flags put out there with the crosses every year. And you're, you're talking about doing something similar to that and wanting to do it over on the expressway, the Veterans Express? Yes, sir. Um, right. 
just a quick background, the um, Calhoun County uh, Veterans Association, CCVO, which uh, is heavily involved in doing the parade. We were a member of that organization. And uh, about uh, April of last year, uh, they thought, hey, this would be a good idea. So they brought it up as a motion in CCRA because of who we are. We're Kim McCollum. It was going to go through Fort McCollum. We nationally said, hey, that's a great project for us. So we stood up uh, a committee, and we're now meeting monthly. At the same token, we're looking at how to do that. Um, right now, we're looking at putting flags up with a name much like the folks, much like the uh, one in Glencoe for every name that's on the wall. And then we'd also like to honor all the other veterans in Calhoun County. Uh, now there's a lot that have died. So what we were gonna look at maybe one for every 100, uh, but we were gonna have that up there. Uh, we're, we're looking at trying to get that in place. We've talked to Alabama Department of Transportation about, about an encroachment permit. Um, and right now there's some, uh, that's a bump in the road right now. They're uh, not leaning, so I'm having to uh, reach into some additional resources, uh, reaching back to some people, uh, and uh, see if we can't get some uh, legislative actions involved. Well, I think that having the uh, Senator Pro Tem, Dale Marsh, located here in this area, and uh, he, if he'd step, uh, he'd step up to the plate, they would probably listen to him, you know, or give him an ear where they wouldn't listen to you and I. Well, Matt, in fact, uh, last Tuesday at the Calhoun County Chamber meeting out on the 167th National Guard, I had a brief moment to speak with him about that, and uh, he seemed very positive about it, and I did send him some information about that, and I'm going to try to get back with him in the next week or two to see where he stands because he is on the Veterans Committee for the state of Alabama. So that'd Are be you very talking about... So you said put some flags. Are you talking about just flags? Or are you talking about a cross on the flag? We would like for those that have died and those that the names are on the wall. We would have a cross mm -hmm. with their name and a flag, much like they do in Glencoe. And then for just those that have died um, in the community, then we'll have just a flag. Of course, we can't have a flag for every one of them. So we'd look at maybe for every 100 a flag. And even with that we'd look at about 125 flags. We'd add about two flags. There's approximately 150 to 180 veterans that die every year in this county. Mike, are we talking about uh, these flags would be up there just like the, the days surrounding Memorial Day and things like that, certain right. days they wouldn't be up there all the time? Not all the time. We identify six or seven holidays that, that we would have them up there, put them up a week in advance of that holiday, and then keep them a week after. So for each one of those holidays, it would be up for about two weeks. I said at the beginning of the show, you know, to get your pen that you might yeah. could help out. Now, there's people out here in the community that's watching this in this area, especially, uh, and if we go out all over the area, we go all over the world, but the people we're talking about in the general vicinity of Calhoun County would uh, we need them to be on board with us to give their voice right. to the legislature in support of uh, something like that. Because I remember when uh, years and years ago I said something to uh, one of the DOT people about that, and his first words were the, the distractive thing. I said, "Well, they've done it for years and never had any problem there." And I said, "Then what happens in Glencoe?" that's still part of a state highway. And then the, it's like, there's no answer to that. Right. They, you know, you can't say it's okay to do it. You can't do it down there, but you can do it up here. So the, your, your, your defense is Glencoe. Right. But your offense is to say the first time and they say, well, you got people running out there in the middle, putting these flags up, they're gonna get hurt, you know, and all this kind of thing. No. But uh, they do have these reflective jackets and things like that. Right, and, and the warning signs, you no, know, we got people working same yeah. as they yeah. put up for the, the mowers that are out yeah. there. It's right. not like it's gonna be an all day deal putting no. up uh, no. that many flags. No. Either, so. in, our, in what we envision for ours, and not to, you know, it's the hill. It's gonna be in between the two intersections the mile markers so that way when the people come up the hill they'll see them all when they go down the hill you know we envision uh, like a wall of waving flags just mm. you know spaced out very beautiful so that way very patriotic yeah. we're looking at it well it makes a statement and and it's what better area than where all the people that served out there that people don't realize um, a lot of things that when you talk about McClellan, you're talking about economics. You're talking about the car sales and the house sales and all that stuff, but right. there was more to that. 
A lot of people that served at McClellan no longer with us. They left right. here and they went places mm -hmm. serving this country. And uh, for that, just the fact that what it what it represented, what McClellan represented, it, what better place to have something like that? It, it makes more sense to have it there than it does in Glencoe, <laughs> even though that, that I love that what they do up yeah. there. But but if I was on the argument, the devil's advocate, you know, they they're going to say, oh, there's a distraction. It's, yeah, ain't that a good distraction? Absolutely, yes, it is. Uh, and yeah. that's what they did with Memorial Park. People were crying, oh, look at over there, all them dead people over there, ten thousand every day. You know, I got to go to work. Yeah, ain't that nice that you can go to work because these people gave their lives to do that. Right. You yes. can do all those things. And for those flags that's in the median, they represent what gives you the freedom to go to Montgomery and do the things you do and go. You know, it's it's a two-way deal. It's not just a, a gimme type thing. Right. But I, I, I salute you guys for doing that. And it's, um, um, let's see what else. You have, if somebody wanted to, to get in touch with the chapter, is there a number for the, I don't have one, but do y'all have a number or? No, the easiest it? way really right now to get a hold of us is go to MG. Wait a minute, I'm gonna write that, okay. MG. Gerald Watson. MG Watson? Right, on Facebook. Yeah, We've Gerald opened Watson. up a Facebook page and that, so, because okay. we had also recognized that there are a lot of people outside this area that remember McCullen and that, and so okay. to connect to all of them. But we also do a lot of our trying to recruit people to become involved in different uh, activities. I'm already on that page. You know, right. And, and not only is it just about this, I, uh, I've, I noticed that it's uh, it's kind of like a news feed too. It, right. it puts some pretty good information out right. there, and not as good as mine, but uh, right. <laughs> no, it, it's got some pretty good information, yeah. there. And, and it does get in politics every once in a while, which I uh, those people that know me know I, I love and hate it. Oh. Uh, but we got we got a minute, so let's. What am I? Don't let me get over something. Tell me what I need to talk about in a minute and a half. Well, one of the things I like to bring up is the big program that we've had and we started a few years ago is we visit rest homes in the local area, start visiting rest homes in the local area and uh, state VA homes during Christmas time to bring gifts and cheer to the veterans. You've been there. down to Pell City? Pell City, we hit every one of them. What do you uh, think about Pell City? Beautiful facility, beautiful facility. I, I try to reserve a room there. In that for the I'm future. a little bit biased about that. I was trying to pick something out of yeah. you. Yeah. But uh, we started off four years ago, and we only we did a couple of rest homes in the area. Probably had a total of you know twenty some veterans uh, this past year. We provided gifts was to Gary Har Harvey. A part of yes, he was. was. Gary Great Harvey was a key him. member of this. Yeah, I really uh, it really bothered me. I didn't uh, I knew him very well and. I knew he'd, he'd talk about that. He and I were going to go out to the racetrack and help, try to help people. We done run out of time. I, I appreciate y'all being on Thank the show. You. As we get on down Thank the road, you very much. as we get on down the road and we run into bumps and stuff, you come back on here. Let's talk about this some more because Love this is something that, that benefit everybody in the area. To say something about this is who we are, and uh, this is who what McClellan was. Got to go to a break. Come back. I got news that you can use. Stay right there. Welcome back to Veterans Issues. If you got any questions about what we talked about here today about the uh, the uh, Chemical Corps and that uh, the flag program, whatever, just give me a call. My information is on the screen here and you can see it. And uh, just give me a call. I'll get in touch with John and Mike. We'll make it work. Uh, I want to bring get the control room and bring up a uh, flyer that we've got here uh, regarding the Marine Corps. Uh, they got a Semperfy poker run on the, uh, I can't even read the dates on there. <laughs> Saturday today, August the 13th, August 13th, Saturday, August 13th. And where's it, where's it start at, kids? Uh, the folks at home can read this, but. Oh, yeah, okay. It starts over to T Hall, uh, Harley Davidson Place here in Oxford. So that's on the 13th of August. And I should have had the flyer here in front of me, but I didn't. But I can't, uh, you folks at home can read all that. The Semper Fi Poker Run. 2016. There you go, Randy Brule. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, the uh, we had the we had the event up in the park. Patriotism in the park. We didn't have as many people as I'd like to have, but we had a great group up there. Thanks to Stephen, folks, for the kids that uh, he brought up there. And uh, man, I'm gonna tell you, there's a drill sergeant that let everybody have it. He had all of us almost in tears. It's a great day. We may do that again. That was the first annual, so that means that we got to room to do a lot more of them. So. 
it was a, our way of trying to teach uh, patriotism to these young folks that uh, in so many ways and why they put their hand on the heart and when we, what we mean by the cost of freedom. Now, I've been telling you about the new parking over at the VA in Birmingham, 2415 7th Avenue South, till I remembered the number. So I got out and I'm heading over there this past week and I've got a hearing appointment. And, uh, and the hearing one is in the, the VA hospital. But I didn't read my paperwork and it's at the same place as a parking deck, 2415 7th Avenue South. So I punch in 2415 7th Avenue, it is no such place. It'll only give me like 339 on 7th Avenue South. So they, if you folks are running the same thing I did, you punch in GPS, just go to, get off on 22nd Avenue and go over to two more blocks, it's 24th, and you'll see the big sign up there that says VA and the VA parking and the clinics and there, the women's clinics there, as is the hearing clinic and some others inside the parking thing. Get out of the parking, you don't even have to go over to the big hospital, as I call it. So. Now, in the choice program, the choice program is sometimes you don't, you, the, the VA will send you to a local physician in your area rather than you have to go all the way to Birmingham. Or if you're watching from somewhere else like Childersburg or something like that. I just got it, I just got that to happen to me where I had an appointment in Birmingham. They called me and said, you really go somewhere local? I said, yeah, and I, my choice card said, yeah. I got that number, I called that number. They hooked me up, I've got an appointment a couple of weeks here with the, uh, the eye clinic, our eye doctor here in, uh, in Anniston. So, the choice program does work, and uh, they so look into that if you don't, if it, especially if making a trip to Birmingham aggravates your problem. So uh, if it doesn't have to do with the miles as much as it does, is it the best thing for you? Is it the best thing for you, the veteran, uh, to see someone local or uh, go over to Birmingham? The law enforcement tag, I gotta encourage you to keep purchasing that if you will. That's how we built the Alabama Law Enforcement Memorial and with your with the sales on that. It goes with everything. Kia, Kia sponsors the show in, uh, there in, in uh, Gadsden and here in Anniston. Uh, Don Hobden is a Special Forces fella and uh, he gives uh, special discounts to the, to the veterans and the first responders and we're out of time so I'm going to give this salute. This week's salute goes to the Dragon Soldier and we salute them for what they're doing. We'll see you next week here on Veterans Issues, and we're out of here.